What's up guys? Thanks for watching another episode of Two Car Garage. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, James, are you a sucker for pain? Do you have psychological issues? Uh, what is this sitting behind you? What, what sort of pig is this taking up your entire lift and then some? I thought you were on the cusp of finishing your beautiful custom Virago build. Yes, all of that is true, but here's the thing. I, I have to be turning wrenches, right? And because I'm waiting for a couple of parts on my own bike, it's sitting over there under the cover. That means my lift was open. That means all my friends and buddies that are always texting me saying, hey, can you do this to my bike? Hey, can you do this to my bike? I finally have some space on my lift. So a buddy of mine named Doug, he has this 2007 Suzuki V-Strom 650. Needs a little bit of routine maintenance on it. We're talking easy stuff. Air filter, spark plugs, the engine guards on it need fixed. I think they broke a little bit at one of the wells. Pretty straightforward stuff and kind of fun stuff because it's a newer bike. Now they made two of these V-Strums. They make the 650 and the 1000. They're all V-twin motorcycles. And from what I hear, the 1000 is a beast, sure, but the 650 is perfectly adequate. And I rode this bike, I think once a few years ago, right when my friend Doug picked it up. And even on the highway, it is fine. Like the power, is adequate, especially in a modern 650. It's not like the old bikes. Here's my cousin's 1981 Yamaha 750, where I'm willing to bet this newer 650 makes quite a bit more horsepower and torque than this old 750. These are big bikes. I mean, look at this thing on the lift. This thing is a pig. Here we have a really nice Saddleman seat and this thing is really really comfortable. You're seated nice and upright You see these bars sweep back a little bit. The riding position is actually really nice You get the new bike fuel injected v-twin. It's liquid cooled chain drive. You do have ABS Let's find the ABS sensors over here you do have ABS, there's one sensor, then you have one on the back wheel as well. The ABS light is on, so we might take a look at that and see why. It might just be a faulty sensor or something. That sounds pretty good, right? Now this thing does have a lot covering it, right? So we're gonna need to take off uh, all of it, I guess, to get to the air box and spark plugs, but either way. The disassembly process is pretty straightforward on this machine, just taking everything off. Disconnecting the electric fuel pump, taking off all these little cowlings with these little push pin things. This underscoop has to come off so that we can get these giant plastic bulges off. Now you can understand why we put engine crash guards on a bike like this when you realize that there's so much plastic that could break. Because it's fuel injected, we have a lot of lines to disconnect, and of course the fuel tank is pretty much full, making it extremely heavy. But that's alright, nothing we can't handle here. The air filter looks really nice. You can see that there's some debris in it, but overall it's been changed somewhat recently. So we're good. Now who doesn't like to work on a clean machine? That means I always like to pay it forward. Even though the owner, Doug, will probably never notice, even though the only person that notices is the next guy to work on this, I really like to pay things forward by cleaning as I go. It's just so much nicer working on a clean bike and I like to think it comes back around. You have to remove the lower radiator bolt so that you can swing the radiator out a little bit to get to this front cylinder spark plugs. Now each cylinder has two spark plugs, one on the top and one on the side. Inspecting the spark plugs, they look great. That golden color is what you want to see for 10,000 miles. We're replacing them with iridium plugs. The only difference is that this top part needs to thread off because of the spark plug cap is different. Iridium plugs last a lot longer. People say they could get anywhere from 50 to 70,000 miles, so that's great. The top spark plug on this front cylinder is a pain. You have to swing away the radiator a little bit. I'm not showing you the sort of contraption of U-joints and extensions that I had to use. I don't know what you have in your toolbox. You're just gonna have to see what works for you. This has never happened to me before. I couldn't get the spark plug socket on the spark plug on this rear cylinder. And then I realized that this rubber piece from the boot here, from the cap, was stuck down in. So I had to sort of fish it out with a long screwdriver and pick. But once I realized what happened, it was easy peasy. Just like both spark plugs on the rear cylinder. 
We've got trouble in paradise when it comes to these crash guards. You can see how they are not sandwiched together in the center. And that's because I guess the last time that he dumped this thing, this tab broke off all along three welds so it can't squeeze together. Check this out. You can see this thin piece of metal all along the three sides. The welds just sheared. So we just ground it down, re-welded it, painted it. Dunzo. You know how sometimes things are just like attracted to you in the universe? For me, for some reason, motorcycles without oil are attracted to me. I just happened to look over at this sight glass and realized there's no oil in it. So I texted my friend Doug and I said, hey buddy, uh, I can tell it's got a pretty new k and oil filter on it. Is there any oil in it? And he said, yeah, he changed the oil and he put oil in it until it came up to the center of the window, but I guess he didn't let it settle or did it too fast because all that came out was about two quarts and this takes three quarts of oil. So from the low to the full mark, it's approximately one quart, meaning this had only two out of three quarts. Not catastrophic because he only had a hundred miles on it since the oil change, but still something that you want to fix, right? So we just drained the oil topped it off with three fresh quarts and we're good to go. Check your oil, people. Make sure you're putting in the correct capacity. For having so much plastic and plastic tabs and everything, things went back together smoothly. Nothing broke. Now for the ABS, remember the ABS light came on? We just have to jump this one little ABS connector and then we'll watch these lights flash on the dash. You can see the red ABS light is solid on, solid off. Solid on, solid off it would flash the number, the quantity of codes if it had any, but that flashing means there are no codes. So we're just gonna disconnect the battery and clear it and hope it goes away. A tale as old as time. After doing a little bit more cleaning, it's time to do some chain service. You can see there's way too much slack in the chain. It should be about an inch and that's it. Loosening up the axle. These are nice and easy chain slack axle adjusters on both sides. You can see these little Allen heads. You just tighten them or loosen them the same amount on both sides so that the axle is not sort of twisted. And there's little index marks on both sides so you can be sure it's straight. With the slack set, we can go ahead and clean the chain. After scrubbing it, I like to spray it with some cleaner, but not brake cleaner. I only use carb cleaner. Brake cleaner could dry out the rubber o-ring, so you don't want to do that. We've done all this work, people. Let's take her for a burn. All right. What do you say we go for a ride? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. The battery is dead. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess we'll go get the jumper pack and try again. This is typical. Absolutely typical. This is a uh, great jumper pack and the best thing about lithium ion jumper packs is I haven't charged it in like eight months and it's still got a full battery because it's lithium ion. Amazing. I think my dad got me this uh, one or two Christmases ago so thanks Jim. All right, shall we go for a ride now? Now you can see the ABS light is still on. That doesn't go off until you hit a certain speed. I think it's like, I don't know, maybe three miles an hour or five miles an hour or something. Oh, look at that, the ABS, ABS light went off already. Good. You know, this thing sounds pretty darn good with that KTM exhaust. All right, we've got a little bit of engine temperature now. So here I am cruising on the back roads in sixth gear, turning 5,000 RPM at about 65 miles an hour. That's probably a little bit high, but either way. And this thing's all right, you know? I mean, it, it doesn't feel like it's revved out right now. I mean. It, does it really redline at 10 and a half thousand RPM? Who the heck is running this thing to 10 and a half thousand RPM? Uh, but either way, I mean, I, I doubt it makes power anywhere near 10 and a half thousand, right? But uh, 
I mean, this is just fine. You downshift, you get a little bit of torque, you know? Um, in top gear like this, I don't have any torque. Uh, from quarter throttle to half, I'd say, it doesn't really feel like there's much there. But, I mean, this Subaru Crosstrek in front of me is, you know, driving pretty spiritedly. And here I am behind him. Uh, just, you know, downshifting before turns, rolling on the throttle out of the apexes. And this bike feels nice. Um, it, you do feel the top heaviness of it, right? Because it is top heavy. So you feel it. Um, it's, it's almost like, you know, you have to push it into the turn. Once it's in the turn, once you have the weight into the turn and the tires are loaded and the suspension is loaded, it feels fine, feels great. But to get it to that point, it, it takes a little bit of effort. You know, it's not exactly a flickable machine, as they say. We've only got 10,000 miles on this machine and this will run for a heck of a lot longer. Now, one thing that's nice is we have street tires on this. A lot of guys that probably would buy these V-Strums are going to put dual sport tires on because they think they need them. They think they're going to be hitting a lot of fire trails and off-road, when in reality, right, if 99% of your driving is on paved roads, you should probably have just normal street tires, right? Um, because you're thankful for them now where you want to drive a little bit more spiritedly on the back roads and you just want to be that much more confident in your tires. All right, let's turn around. Let's see how the bike handles a full steering lock turn. Slow down, get ready to feather the clutch. Okay, we're not quite full lock, but it, I mean, that, that's pretty nice. It has good balance. It's, it's easy to balance easy to turn sharp like that just by counterweighting with your body a little bit yeah i mean i mean i'm opening it up here and i mean i'm not like <laughs> you know scared uh it's not even that i'm not scared it's that i'm not even like like I, like i like i feel nothing you know like there's just so many more bikes that are so much more powerful. It's not exactly gonna get your adrenaline rushing. But that being said, people don't buy this bike to have a rush of adrenaline. Is it fast enough? 100%, certainly. A few minutes ago, driving behind that Subaru uh, with you know some 19-year-old getting it in the apex, it, this felt great. And you can have a lot of fun on this bike with this extended windshield in front of me. I actually feel very little wind on my chest or helmet and this is a really comfortable bike to sit on with this saddleman seat I mean here I am behind this truck and I could ride like this all day and maybe that's who buys a bike like this right somebody tall I'm 5'9 and the bikes a little bit too big for me somebody who's tall somebody who wants a comfortable bike somebody wants a bike that if it drops over on its side it's no big deal they can just pick it up because it's made to have a little bit of character to it oh no and that's why we take shakedown rides people hmm? see just lost this little cowling that's no bueno how you guys weren't going to tell me how long ago did this fly off eyes on the road james eyes on the road what am i supposed to do with this now just sit on it yeah, okay, I'll sit on it. Uh, sharp edges, sharp edges. Okay. I mean, we don't need that anyway, you know? We should have, we can lighten this pig up a little bit. Now, to my friend Doug, who owns this motorcycle, I'm sorry, Doug. I'm sorry that I keep calling it a pig because it's a nice motorcycle, you know? It's still a pig. It is. I mean, it's, it's really big. It's pretty heavy. Um, you don't really have that much power. It's sort of hard to maneuver and, and you know, move into the turns. Um, but that being said, it's a nice bike. You know, it's really interesting. The weight sort of like hits you at a certain spot. Like on the top here, in the middle of the tires, this feels like I'm just like floating effortlessly within this. To go any farther than that takes work, right? Like 
to push the weight past that point on the tires takes some work. But here in the middle of the tire, with the weight on the top end, it just feels like it's floating back and forth. So for most riding, if you're not going really fast on back roads like this, it is easy to turn. It's easy to maneuver. This is just an easy to work on bike for somebody who wants a not crazy expensive machine that they can get lots of mileage out of and that's versatile. Now I've never ridden a V-Strom 1000. Um, I, I, I think that's the bigger size of 1000. I imagine that any of this bike's shortcomings when it comes to power is made up in the thousand. You just can't deny the extra torque from a leader bike, so especially a leader V-twin. So I imagine that if you want this bike and you want that sort of smile factor, to if you get the thousand, you'll be just fine. The downside of the thousand is going to be that it's more expensive, right? The 650s probably being a little bit less desirable are much more affordable and for most people they'll be just fine and very happy with the 650 so it's a nice bike buy one if you want i don't care if you don't let's go back to the shop as always guys i would love your support by hitting that subscribe button or leaving a comment down below we'll see you in the next one thanks